Welcome back Guardians. Season of the Splicer released a new submachine gun called Shayura's Wrath and in the lore tab of course was a bunch of lore about Shayura. Now I thought this was a standalone piece so I was quite surprised to find that Shayura has like 15 lore entries from Season of the Chosen. All of the lore entries from the Trials of Osiris gear. I was even more surprised to discover that Shayura is the new Shin Malfur, hunting down guardians who wield the darkness. So stick around, this is a long story, but it's a great story. I think it will be up there with the classics like Dredgen Yor and Shin Malfur. Because it is a long video, you can find the chapter titles in the progress bar below. For example, this is what the chapter titles look like for Ephrodite's 30 plus minute lore episode. But before starting, this video is sponsored by Raycon, co-founded by Ray J, who provide premium wireless earbuds for half the price of premium audio brands. While I can't travel internationally at the moment, thankfully in my home state of Western Australia, we have an amazing coastline. And this month I went and snorkeled with the whale sharks in Exmouth, which is about a 12 hour drive north of Perth. I wasn't crazy enough to do the drive, so I took a flight, but whenever I do travel, I bring my Raycons. They are perfect for travel with six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, noise isolating fit, and have a very comfortable and compact design, making all that time spent in an airport or on the road go that little bit faster. As you can see, no dangling wires or stems, they come in a range of colors. I have the blue ones. And if you are interested, there is a 45 day free return policy. To see why they are loved by celebrities like Snoop Dogg and Mike Tyson, click the link in the description box below or go to buyraycon.com forward slash Mylan to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. And with that, let's begin this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. Now the first thing I need to do before we can even start this story is describe how you determine the order of each lore entry, specifically the lore that was released with Season of the Chosen on the Trials of Osiris gear. Every piece of armor on all three classes relates to Shayura, and there is a hint on each card that indicates the order in which you should read them. Knowing this actually forms a huge part of the storytelling, so I'm going to spend some time explaining it. Each entry is described as a simulation reconstruction log from three different perspectives. One perspective is Shayura herself, and the other two perspectives are her Trials of Osiris fire team members, the Hunter, Aisha, and I know depending on what country you live in, you may say Aisha or Aisha, but Aisha makes the most sense to me. So the Hunter Aisha and the Exo Titan Reed 7. Each lore entry begins with the same format, with the first sentence reading something like this. Simulation Reconstruction Log LA0102 Trials Arena The Lighthouse Mercury The middle section, the LA, followed by two sets of numbers, is very significant as it indicates the perspective of the entry, i.e. Shayura or her fire team members Aisha and Reed, and it determines the chronological order of the lore entries. The first set of numbers represents the perspective of the lore entry. If it is LA01, then the lore entry describes Shayura's perspective. If the log number reads LA02, it represents Shayura's teammate's perspective, either Aisha or Reed. It is a little confusing as it would have been nice if the fire team members had different numbers, like Aisha has LA02 and Reed has LA03, but for whatever reason, both Aisha and Reed have the same log code identifier. That being said, any confusion with the perspective is resolved by having the lore entry correspond to their actual class. For example, Shayura is a warlock, Aisha is a hunter, and Reed is a titan. The warlock lore tabs from the Trials of Osiris gear are from Shayura's perspective because she is a warlock. The Hunter Lord tabs from the Trials of Cyrus gear are written from Aisha's perspective because she's a hunter. And yep, you guessed it, the Titan Lord tabs are from Reed's perspective because he's a Titan. Now the second number in the sequence indicates the chronology of the events. The entries start at 1 and go to 5, meaning there are 5 of what I'm calling significant events in Shayura's story. By event, I just mean a plot point. They describe five distinct events that happen in Shayura's story, all that build towards her being very similar to Shin Malfur. 
It is no coincidence that there are five events because you have five gear slots, helmet, gloves, chest, boots, and class item. Each gear slot covers the same event, but from a different perspective. For example, if you take the Trials of Osiris helmet from each class, their identifier code will all end in 01, and they will all speak about the first event in Shayura's story, but they will speak about it from a different perspective. The Warlock from Shayura's perspective, the Hunter from Aisha's perspective, and the Titan from Reed's perspective. Right, so this whole system boils down to this. If you want to read the first entry chronologically in Shayura's story, you should read the lore entries ending in 01 from each class. Then you'd move on to 02 from each class and so on until you reach the last event detailed in the lore entries with log numbers ending in 05. Lucky for you, I've done all that work for you. I've pulled out all of the important parts and put it into a single video. Hooray! So finally, we can start event number one in Shayura's story. Event one starts with a heated conversation between Shayura and her teammate Aisha about the loss of Sloane with the arrival of the pyramid ships. We assume that Shayura had somewhat of a close relationship with Sloane by the way she's talking, but we don't have any information beyond that. We assume that Sloane died when Titan disappeared as the pyramid ships arrived in our system. However, we actually don't know exactly what happened to her. As a reminder, the last we saw of Sloane was documented in the law book Duress and Egress. Sloane had acquired a Golden Age suit of armor and was fighting off the hive as the pyramid ships arrived. Have a listen to the law entry Sloane Rystrad. It reads, Sloane lurched outside. There was a storm like Titan was trying to drive off the invader that sat lazily in the sky. She walked into the gale and the rain bearded on her second skin. Each step was easier than the last as the suit adjusted to her gait. A symbol flashed and a hive thrall charged her. She gripped it by its neck and arm before tearing it apart. It was so easy. She laughed then, and the suit interpreted it as a battle cry and amplified it, broadcasted it. The sound echoed off the discarded shipping containers on the raining landing pads, echoed through Siren's watch and up toward the pyramid. Lightning flashed in the sky and the storm raged on. Like I said, we assume that Sloane died with the other planetary vendors when their respective planets' moons disappeared when the pyramid ships arrived. Sloane disobeyed Zavala's evacuation orders, choosing to remain on Titan. And even though this was her choice, Shayura feels like she abandoned Sloane and that they should have done more to try and save her. So the first event is Shayura and Aisha having this disagreement as they approach their next trials match on Mercury. Have a listen to the law entry Pyrrhic Ascent Hood. It reads, We shouldn't just leave her behind, Shayura says, into the void, with a tightness in her throat. Not our call, Shay. Agree or disagree, we're a united front. Aisha, her teammate, replies from across the curvature of Mercury's atmosphere. Then act like it. Shayura fires back, snapping her jaw shut as soon as a shout escapes her lips. She brings her hands up to her mouth, regretting her tone, but not retracting it. It's Sloane's choice. Aisha's voice sounds smooth in contrast. You know how she is. If she's declining evac, there's no force in the system that will uproot her. Stay, go, it's her choice. So following this heated debate, Shayura directs some of the blame towards Zavala, questioning his leadership, saying that he's trying to do the work of two vanguards. Shayura's other fire team member, the Exo Titan, Reed 7, provides additional perspective on this argument between Shayura and Aisha, saying that the teammates have had arguments before, but this felt different. I believe that the main point of this lore entry is to demonstrate that this is the beginning of Shayura really distrusting the Vanguard, reaching a breaking point, and no longer being aligned with the values of the Vanguard and Guardians. Of course, later in the story, this would escalate to Shayura hunting down of the Guardians. For Shayura, the loss of Sloane appears to be twofold. One is simply losing a friend, but the second is a reminder of Guardians' mortality. While Guardians can often be brought back to life, of course, under certain circumstances, they can be permanently killed. And this is what really starts to traumatize Shayura. Okay, so that is the first event in the story of Shayura. They are flying into this trials match, and Shayura feels like she abandoned Sloane on Titan following the arrival of the pyramid ships, which turns towards anger towards the vanguard, specifically Zavala, and this event also plants the seed for Shayura's fear of death. Let's move on to event number two, which describes a brutal scene from the trials match that Shayura and her team have just entered. 
This is also when it becomes really important to understand this simulation reconstruction log identification system that I described at the beginning. So in the law entries, Shiura's team has won the trials match. The match is over, but Shiura continues to kill an opposing guardian with her sword. It's pretty intense. Have a listen to what happens during the match from Aisha's perspective, which is documented in Pyrrhic Ascent Vest. It reads, A plume of atomic fire rises up over a nearby block of Vex design, as if in direct response to Aisha. The lighthouse gives off a soft tone. The match is over. They won. A sudden scream spurs Aisha and Reed into action. The pair navigate the familiar Vex architecture quickly, but two more agonized screams ring out in the time it takes to traverse the arena. When they reach the source of the noise, Aisha sees Shayura impaling another guardian through the faceplate of his helmet with her sword. His ghost shrieks in frustration, trying desperately to get between Shayura and his guardian. Shay, Aisha asks in confusion, but Shayura's only response is to rip her sword out of the dead guardian's head. Reed hangs back in stunned silence. Aisha watches until the other guardian draws a breath once more, but before he can finish shouting a plea to Shayura, the warlock cuts off his arm in one stroke and cleaves through the top of his helmet in a second. Shay, no, Aisha yells, running up to her friend. She wraps her arms around Shayura's midsection. Shayura screams like a frightened animal, lashing out with a swift slash of his sword in the direction of the Guardian's corpse. Shayura, the match is over, Reed shouts, snapping back to reality. The match is over. Shayura screams as the fire team members pull her back, voice cracking in a feral cry as flames race down her arms and swirl along the length of her blood-slicked sword. No, no, stop, no, Shayura howls, fighting against the restraints of her comrades. Aisha grabs at Shayura's wrist, trying to keep her from swinging her sword again. Shay, Aisha tries to get through to her. Shay, Shayura screams an endless wail into the scolding Mercurian sky. Right, so you're probably thinking, that escalated quickly. I mean, Shayura is very upset about Sloane and had a fight with a teammate, but why react so violently to her opposition? Well, this is why you need to understand the number system of the law cards, because if you read the law entry about this event from Shayura's perspective, you will understand that she is having an hallucination, some sort of post-traumatic stress response, and Shayura actually thinks she's fighting the hive, not a guardian. So now have a listen to the exact same event, but from Shayura's perspective. This is what she thought was happening. The law tab for Pyrrhic Ascent Vestment reads, Edging a half step backward, Shayura knows that the only way out is through. Wings of flame roar off her back, leaving a trail of rippling heat and hollowed out thrall in her wake. Her sword clashes with the knight's shield, shattering it in a single blow. Her follow through cleaves through the knight's arm down into its chest. Shayura turns on her heel toward the remaining thrall. She can feel the light in her ebbing and knows that they will overwhelm her if she doesn't succeed now. Death against the Hive is never a sure return, not after what happened to Taiko 3 and her fire team here. A blinding pain hits Shayura in her back, her vision swims, mind reels. Had she missed one? Feeling the warmth of blood running below her armor, Shayura turns to see the Hive Knight reborn, sword covered in her blood. Screaming inside her helmet, Shayura feels a deep panic build in her chest. She knows a hive death ritual when she sees it, and she walks straight into their trap. She rolls away from the knight's next swing and into the reach of thrall that tear at her armor. Mustering the last of her solar energy, Shayura calls up a cyclonic pillar of flame that twists up into the sky and consumes the knight. The revenant knight emerges from the flames, already reconstituting. Shayura leaps forward and drives a sword through his face, tackling him to the ground. Her solar aura flickers and fades, smoke and steam billow from her back and shoulders. Shay? She hears one of the surviving thralls speak in a human voice. Shayura twists her sword in the knight's face and shakes sizzling green blood onto the catwalk. The knight begins to reform again in a horrifying blaze of green flame, but as it reaches out toward her, she cuts off his arm and sends her sword through the top of his head in a brutal follow-through. The thrall wails. She can feel an arm around her waist, restraining her. She kicks and struggles, crying out as the last wisps of praxic fire twist down her arm and sword. No, no, stop, no, Shayura howls, fighting against the pull of the thrall. 
Shay, the thrall cry in the voices of our friends. Shay, Shira screams into the impossible seas. So as you can see, there are multiple clues that tells us that Shiura is hallucinating and that she's not fighting a Hive Knight. She's fighting a Guardian in the Trials of Osiris match. The first clue is in the first line of the Lord tab where it lists the destination as the Trials Arena, Mercury. And yet Shiura describes fighting a Knight on Titan. The second clue is Shiura kills what she thinks is a Knight in the exact same way that she kills the Guardian, a sword through the head. The third clue is the Knight continues to respawn this is not the knight respawning, this is the guardian respawning, pleading for their life. And the fourth clue is both law entries end in the exact same way. Aisha pulls Shayura away from her opponent while she screams, no, no, stop, no. Now, this is not the only significant thing that happens during event two. We also need to read Reed's perspective, the Exo Titan. He reports the incident in the same way Aisha does, i.e. it's after the end of the trials match and Shayura is repeatedly stabbing their opponent. However, his law entry also documents how during this moment he heard the darkness. The darkness communed with Reed. Have a listen to the Pyrrhic Ascent plate. It reads, Aisha is saying something, but all Reed hears is blood rushing in his ears. Not his blood though, the memory of it of something buried behind layered plates of carbon polymer and plasteel weave, something haunting his synaptic network. In that moment, Reed is outside of his own body, remembering faces frozen in stone, recalling the whispered plea of his ghost's tortured voice on Io. Don't you see? Reed's heart races. In light, there is only weakness. The opposing team's guardian is brought back to life by his ghost, but before the guardian can finish shouting a plea to Shayura, the Warlock cuts off his arm in one stroke. She cleaves his sword through the top of his helmet in a brutal follow through. Reed feels his chest tightening, feels a sense of panic kicking in. Only failure. Shay, no. Aisha yells, running up to her friend. She wraps her arms around Shayura's midsection. Shayura screams like a frightened animal, lashing out with a swift slash of a sword in the direction of the Guardian's corpse. Only death. Shayura, the match is over, Reed shouts, snapping back to reality. The match is over. Right, we won't really understand the significance of Reed hearing the darkness until we get a bit closer to the end of this story. But in general, this starts to set the scene for Guardians choosing to wield stasis and side with the darkness in order to gain power and survive. So just keep this in mind for later. Okay, let's move on to event three. Our suspicions are confirmed in these entries. Shayura and her fire team are now in the tower following the trials match, and Aisha is encouraging Shayura to speak with Akora Ray. We know that Akora Ray had a very difficult time during the Red War, specifically questioning what it means to be a guardian, being struck with mortality when everyone lost their light, and in general, all the trauma that came from the Red War. So Aisha is encouraging Shayura to speak with Akora Ray because she thinks Akora will understand. The law doesn't specifically say that Shayura is experiencing post-traumatic stress disorder. However, she admits that the combat of the Trials of Osiris match triggered a flashback of her fighting the Hive and fearing for her life. Have a listen to the law tab for the Pyrrhic Ascent gloves. It reads, Shayura looks at Aisha out of the corner of her eye, seeing the twinned look of support and worry on her face. Can guardians be unfit for duty? Shayura wonders aloud, her voice muffled by the tabletop. I mean, Aisha replies, her hesitation has a palpable sting. I don't know if I'm okay. Shayura finds her courage to admit. Her heart races as the words pass her lips. When she feels Aisha's arms around her shoulders, it steadies her pulse. Shayura relaxes into the supportive embrace of a friend. It was Titan, Shayura finally admits. Afraid of what the truth means, but unwilling to dig too deeply into her own terrifying delusions. I was back on Titan, like when we were lightless, surrounded by Hive. There was this night. No matter how many times I killed him, he kept coming back. I should have died out there. But you didn't, Aisha says. Shayura feels a hand on top of hers and sees Aisha squeezing her palm. It feels like it's happening to someone else, and yet it's still reassuring. We got our light back, and... What happens when the darkness closes in? Shayura needs to know. Though she knows neither Reed nor Aisha have the answer. Will she be lightless again? Alone? The thought of Sloane dying on the arcology eviscerates her. Reed's hand joins Aisha's in a wordless reply. 
It isn't much, but it's enough. Okay, so now we understand the full picture. Shigeru was on Titan during the Red War when everyone lost their light. She lost her light when battling a Hive Knight, and this fear of dying has remained with her. The combat of Trials of Osiris triggered a flashback of this trauma. Pretty heavy stuff. It's basically describing a near-death experience that she had, which has now triggered PTSD. Okay, so moving on to event number four, we have one more event after this, and then the new lore from Season of the Splicer. This event appears to take place as the Traveler reawakens just before Beyond Light. Each lore entry describes a blinding light with a wave of light that washes over them, which is what the player experienced during the live event. Now, this experience, in my opinion, is the turning point for Shayura. The Traveler reawakens, they are bathed in light, but the pyramid ships are also here, and Guardians will begin to side with the darkness by wielding stasis. Shayura reflects upon how appealing and tempting wielding the darkness would be for Guardians, especially after a near-death experience like losing their light during the Red War. Shayura believes you need to choose one path, and one path only. You either side with the light, or you side with the darkness. Have a listen to the Pyrrhic Ascent boots, it reads. Shayura hears Aisha talking beside her, but her thoughts are distant. Shayura grunts a reply, hoping indifferent is enough, but Aisha keeps talking. Something about Chicago, about memory. Shayura grips the railing and watches the people staring up at the Traveler, and she cannot bear to look up with them. I remember. Shiyura finally replies, her own internal fears overlapping with memories of dark times that her fire team experienced below the ruins of Chicago. I never forgot how abandoned we felt, Shiyura adds, a tightness in her voice. The day Gaul stole the light, when they were so far from home, when they went from hunters to hunted. Shiyura also remembers what went unsaid. She remembers those feelings of desperation and abandonment and how she would have accepted any opportunity if it meant living. Her desperate moment did not end in such darkness, but she cannot help but wonder about other guardians, that when faced with the choice between annihilation and salvation, they might make the wrong choice. It is at this point that Shayura decides what she needs to do, which path she needs to take. She decides to side with the light and rejects stasis and the darkness. You may think this is a good thing, but Shayura takes it to the extreme. She chooses to hunt down anyone who wields stasis. In the final event, event number 5, we begin to see Shayura enact her plan and begin to hunt down guardians. The story starts with Shayura travelling to her weekly Trials of Osiris match, and the inside of her ship already has fragmented ghost shells, assumedly from previous stasis wielding guardians that she has already taken out. In some respects, she has become Destiny 2's version of Shin Malfur. Shin Malfur hunted down anyone who embraced a darkness similar to that of Dredgen Yor. Have a listen to the lore entry from Pyrrhic Ascent Bond. It reads, Frost collects on the inside of the cockpit of Shayura's jump ship. Her breath is visible as cold fog. Fragments of ghost shells are scattered atop the console, each glittering with a faint sheen of ice. The warlock stares at her reflection in the shattered central navigation panel, fragmented, broken. Okay, as the lore entry progresses, Shayura enters the Trials of Osiris match with her teammates, and during the match she tries to permanently defeat a guardian who has embraced stasis. She intentionally attacks their ghost. Unlike the last incident, this is not a flashback. Shayura is well aware of her actions. Have a listen to this intense scene from the Pyrrhic Ascent Bond entry. I know what you did on Europa, Shayura says to the Warlock. I know you're a traitor to the light. At first he opens his mouth to speak a denial, but then he tenses and takes a step back. It's not that simple, the Warlock says, shaking his head. You haven't talked to Eris. You don't understand. The Warlock's words are cut off as Shayura lunges in, smashing the butt of a sword against his face, shattering part of his helmet and knocking him to the ground. The Warlock groans, grasping at his face, then looks up at Shayura in vivid anger. It's not illegal, the Vanguard. I'm not here on behalf of the Vanguard, as Shayura says with imperious certainty. Flames begin to spread down the length of his sword. I'm here on behalf of the light. The Warlock snorts and smiles sarcastically. His body language implies he doesn't respect her power. I'm not afraid of you. Come on, end the match. I'm not here for you, Shayura insists. Now he feels fear. Aisha and Reed arrive a moment later, guns raised and ready to assist Shayura. 
She fights back a scowl at seeing them, but turns her attention to the ghost hovering at the warlock's side. Shay, Aisha asks, a nervous tremor in her voice. Shiura lashes out, striking the ghost with his sword and knocking it to the ground. The guardian opens his mouth to shout a plea, but Shiura quickly draws his sidearm and plants a round in his forehead. The ghost chirps, squawks, damaged but alive. She holsters her sidearm again and looks to the ghost. Shay, Reed shouts, and she hears him rushing up behind her. She wouldn't be dragged away, not this time. Shayura turns and expels a blast of force from her palm that knocks Reed onto his back. She quickly reorientates at the ghost and raises her sword for another strike, when suddenly her legs prickle with an unearthly chill of deep space. Shayura tries to let out a scream, but her lungs flash freeze and crystals of stasis energy encrust her body. She turns her head just enough to make eye contact with Aisha and witness the unthinkable. The last person she sees before her world is ice and darkness. Her closest friend, forsaking the light, embracing darkness. The look of betrayal on Shayura's face freezes in the ice. So, Aisha has embraced stasis and stops Shayura from attacking the ghost. The other lore entries from Aisha's and Reed's perspective confirms that both Aisha and Reed visited the Exo Stranger. Although, as far as I know, only Aisha has been confirmed as claiming stasis. Then again, Reed did hear the darkness speak to him, so I wonder if he claimed stasis too. Now, you might think that this is the end of Shayura, but in Season of the Spicer, they introduced a new trials weapon, Shayura's Wrath, and this, I believe, continues her story. The flavor text of Shayura's Wrath reads, But here you are. This is truly a beginning. Shin Malfur. At first, you may think this is odd. Why mention Shin Malfur? Well, Shayura is basically the new Shin Malfur. Shin was hunting down guardians who tried to follow in the footsteps of Dredgen Yor, guardians who are experimenting with the darkness. Well, Shayura is doing the exact same thing. She's taking out guardians who wield stasis. The Lord Tab Shayura's wrath, I believe, hints at what happened after she was frozen by her teammate Aisha. I believe she was locked up by the Vanguard, however, escaped at some point during Season of the Splicer. In the lore entry from Shayura's Wrath, she is talking with a hunter guardian who she is tracked down. The Stasis Hunter recognizes Shayura and implies that she has escaped the Vanguard. They are also aware of her history in killing other guardians. In general, you get the impression that Shayura is well known within the guardian community, similar to Dredgen Yor or Shin Malfur. Have a listen to the lore entry from Shayura's Wrath. It reads, The hunter backs away up the stairs, hand cannon trained on Shayura. He recognizes her armor for what it is, a reward of the trials. I know you. His voice quavers. You shouldn't be here. When did the Vanguard let you out? They didn't. I let myself out since they were too busy opening the gates for our enemies. Shayura indicates, motioning with the barrel of an SMG to the dead Elixni. But you know why I'm here. Right, so I think Shiura was imprisoned after she attacked a guardian during trials, and now she has escaped. I believe she has continued to hunt down more guardians, as her ship now continues with more trophies. Previously, she had destroyed ghosts in her ship, and now she has added to that collection. Have a listen to Shiura's Wrath lore entry. It reads, The warlock Shiura reclines against her seat, the old leather creaking. Her attention is not on her ghost, but rather the human skull sitting in the middle of a command console. Its hollow eye sockets stare back at her. It hardly matters why he's there, Shayura indicates listlessly as she examines the skull's cheekbones. Her fingers graze the microfractures, an artifact of shotgun pellet impact. All that matters is we find him. Right, so now she's decorating her ship with human skulls, and I assume this is a human guardian skull. Shayura has gone full fanatic. This lore entry gets progressively more distressing. She tracks down this guardian who wields stasis. She then kills his elixir companion. She then takes out the guardian's ghost and then finally finishes the guardian off. Have a listen. The elixir once again tilts its head, expression opaque. You listen to the spider's sneak words to eagerly, come, we have a long walk to... The elixir's words are cut off garbled in a wet scream as he is perforated by a barrage of submachine gun fire. The Guardian turns, cloak swirling behind him and hand cannon at the ready. But it isn't Vex or Fallen descending from the high cliffs, 
It's a guardian in black and gold armor gliding to the ground, smoke issuing from the muzzle of her SMG. Shiura's boots lightly touch the leaf-strewn plaza, her eyeless mask fixed on the chrome-clad hunter. He wasn't a combatant, the hunter shouts. Shiura slowly approaches the guardian. Did you find him within the helm of Eremus's skirt, or did you swear yourself to the darkness after her passing? I know you're a few rounds short of a clip, the Guardian quips back, making a flippant gesture with his hand cannon. In that moment of distraction, Shayura shoots him six times in two short bursts. The Guardian collapses, his gun tumbling down the steps. A moment later, his ghost materializes, shell flagged in anger. What are you doing, we- Shayura moves like a lightning bolt, materializing beside the ghost with an upward flourish of a sword of raw praxic fire. The ghost loses a howling scream of horror as he shatters into a flurry of glittering pieces. Crumpled on the stairs, the hunter coughs, his throat damp with blood. Shira pulls her attention away from the shattered ghost, training her SMG down at her quarry. Traitor, she says in a shaky, gasping breath fueled by adrenaline. The hunter laughs, gagging on his own blood as he does. You're no better than the dredgen, he says in pain. Then even quieter. Or Malfur. I killed an agent of the darkness, Shira says, and the hunter has no rebuttal this time. He is still. Holy moly, what a story. For whatever reason, I missed this story during Season of the Chosen, but I'm really glad I got to cover it with the more information we got in Season of the Splicer. Shira, in my opinion, is an ex-Shin Malfur. On a side note, Shira does mention that she does this in the name of the Praxic Fire. That topic will be a separate video. I know Bungie has been adding more lore about the Praxic Fire, so I'll need to do more research into that. But for now, that concludes this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. If you'd like to support the channel and come up to give a comment, you can leave the word Shayura in the comments to represent the next Shin Malfur. As usual, it's been a pleasure. This is Marlon Games. Peace.